Welcome. It's the third Sunday of Easter and we are thrilled to have you alongside today. A couple of quick notes about our service today. We decided to take full advantage of the use of technology and the opportunity to come to you from different uh, places uh, to remind us all of the value of walking the road. Uh, today is uh, the gospel of the road to Emmaus, so you'll hear lots about that in the service. Uh, but a reminder from the very beginning that every time we worship together, especially when we are in a church, you walk a road to your seat. You walk literally from the font near the doors to the altar. Uh, it's always a journey when we gather together and when we invite Christ to be with us, which we will do today. So welcome. We're glad that you're here. If you haven't worshipped before with us, I am Kristen Hawley, uh, proud rector of the parish of St. David's in uh, Washington, D.C., and we've been going live and uh, doing this all by video now for, I think, six or seven weeks. Uh, I don't know that we're getting better at it, but we are getting more efficient. We will not have a full celebration of the Eucharist today. Instead, we will do what we have been doing um, at least last Sunday, which is called the Liturgy of the Word. It is not morning prayer nor is it a Eucharistic service. It is simply the first half of a Eucharistic service called the Liturgy of the Word. So we're leaving out the Liturgy of the Table and we're focusing on the Liturgy of the Word. So if you typically go to Eucharistic services, the beginning, uh, this, this service should all sound familiar to you. We thank you once again if you have been keeping up with your pledge or giving online. Uh, we pray that you will continue to do so and at uh, the end of this time together today that you will click on the donate uh, button and give. It's uh, keeping us afloat and letting us continue to do the work that we are doing both here in the parish but also out in the world. So thank you ahead of time for giving so generously to St. David's and to the missions that we support. We are doing lots of things, uh, mostly online, but not entirely online. So do take a look at our website, uh, stdavidsdc.org, and see all of the things that are happening. Join us in our book studies or our Bible studies, our times of prayer or in the activities that we are doing uh, where there is no screen involved. We're so glad to be with you today, friends. Now set aside the time, the time to sit down and to worship together. Light a candle, gather family if you have them uh, with you in your home, and worship with us. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and for the sake of love gave everything. Oh, 
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Luke. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, 
Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you know what I miss in this time of separation and stay-at-home orders? I miss long car rides. Rarely do I recognize my need for a car ride, a good long car ride, until we are two, three, maybe even four hours into one, and I feel my soul settle. It's a time that my husband and I always used to reconnect, even without thinking or without planning on it. Those long car rides always offered us an opportunity to spend time together in an unhurried sort of way, knowing that there was nowhere we had to be in 10, 20, 30 minutes. There was nothing that had to be done that we weren't doing while we were having a conversation. So it gave us that breadth and length of time to have the conversations that reminded us of just who we are and who one another are. Similarly, I hadn't re realized how much I was missing a car ride most recently until RJ and I escaped the house last week. No children, no dogs, no neighbors, no family, just for a couple of hours in these woods that you see, uh, which are my backyard. And as we started off and meandering down the Rachel Carson Trail, my heart started beating at its normal pace. My soul lightened and I reconnected with my husband and my God once again through the simple act of walking and of conversation. The gift of being able to be present to one another and to God in a way that when you're busy or all together in one space, it's really hard to do, right? It's really hard to do. But in a two, three hour walk out in a place like this, you can find one another, you can find yourself, and you can most certainly find God. So on our five mile loop through these woods, I did, I found myself again. I remembered and I recognized myself, my husband, and our God. So today, friends, I decided that it was time to take advantage of this COVID time when we have to do our liturgy and our worship through technology, through a screen anyways. And I thought, let's take you on location. Let's take you on location to the roads that at least your clergy and your staff walk, where we might meet Christ, where we meet one another, when we meet creation and where we meet ourselves. 
So a little uh, Latin for you this morning. Uh, the word is akolutheo. Akolutheo, actually, it's Greek, not Latin. Uh, and it is Greek for follow. And uh, if you read Gospels at all, uh, or read the New Testament, you will know that follow is a pretty uh, well-used word spoken more than 20 times by Jesus in the New Testament alone. Uh, and it means to walk the same road to walk the same road, to follow, right? To accompany. It's not just a call to tag along. This imperative to follow is why we call our leaders in worship acolytes, right? It's why we follow literally our acolytes in and out of worship when we're all together. They walk alongside us and guide us closer to God, just as Jesus did with his disciples on the road to Emmaus that day. So let's talk a little bit about Jesus and this beautiful story of a long walk and a quick supper. We're still reading, uh, remember, the gospel texts about the actual day of Easter, uh, the day that the women found the empty tomb and were met by an angel. This time we hear Luke's stories about Jesus revealing himself to his friends instead of John's. Later in the day, two of Jesus' disciples, we're told in this particular story, were getting out of Dodge. They were taking the first Uber out of Jerusalem, right? Because they were scared, just like the disciples that we heard about last week in their locked room for fear of the Jews. These particular disciples were scared and wondering if they would be the next in line to be brought in, tried, and crucified. So the story, yet again, begins with the disciples still fearful, still confused. And as they left town, we're told, they headed towards a village called Emmaus, about seven miles away. We think to the west, though I'm not sure where uh, historians and biblical scholars got to the west. Um, and we'll come back to Emmaus in just a moment. So on their way out of Jerusalem, Jesus comes alongside, comes alongside, and we're told that they didn't recognize him. And they walked a couple of hours with him. And all we know is that Jesus, along that walk, retold them all the scriptures that pointed to the fact that the Messiah had to suffer and die before he could rise victorious. And that later, once Jesus blessed and broke that bread, they looked back and said, and weren't our hearts burning within us while we were walking with him and he was opening up the scriptures to us. Wasn't it a walk? Wasn't it a journey like no other, they realized. Now Emmaus, the actual identification of the village is a bit of a conundrum and I kind of love that. Throughout thousands of years, biblical scholars and historians, starting with the very first church historian that we know of, Josephus, uh, from the first century, they've tried to figure out exactly where Emmaus was. There are now no fewer than four sites uh, somewhere close to Jerusalem who call themselves the original Emmaus. But none of them are a perfect fit. So why is this important? Because the destination, friends, is never important, was never important. Jesus reminds us of this always, but particularly in this story, it is not as important as the journey, not if you're walking with Christ. Following Jesus is the destination. We're called not so much to a place, or a particular time, but to walk the same road with Jesus into the kingdom of God. I can't help but hear the earlier conversation between Jesus and the disciples as told by the author of John's gospel when um, we talk about this idea of destination and where we're going. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus said. Believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, right? Know me, trust me, walk with me, love me, recognize me as your Lord, as the Christ, and you will know the way to the kingdom that awaits you. It had nothing to do with knowing the place on a map, knowing where in the woods to find him, how to climb a specific staircase to heaven, right? Friends, we may not have all the answers about our ultimate destination. We may not even know which road or path to choose right now to get away from our own fears and worries and difficulties that chase us. What we do know, what we're promised, is that a long walk, a long drive, a long sit, prayer, meditation that invites Jesus Christ to come alongside is better than any map or any GPS service, even Waze, right? Waze might be able to get me to Saskatchewan and back, someplace I've never been and have never wanted to go, but it can't help me reconnect with God or with my husband or with myself. Knowing my destination gives me a goal, but once I'm there, I have to set a new goal. Eventually, I'll have to leave and find another village or another city or another place. Even when we're locked in our own homes to keep our community safe right now, we find destinations. We find destinations through things like Netflix, naps, knitting, novels, to keep us from going stir crazy, and that's not wrong. And it's in these travels happening in our own living rooms, kitchens, on our own sidewalks and woods, that Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, asks to come alongside. If you're bringing Christ along with you, then it's a holy walk. It's an Emmaus walk. It's not about the destination, friends. As glorious as some destinations are, none of them can compare to the one that he calls us to ultimately. It's about the walking. It's about the journey. Taking a long enough walk, a long enough ride, having a long enough conversation or sit to remember and recognize the presence of God and to believe. And in doing so, you might even recognize yourself. Amen. Let us pray. Present Lord, we offer our prayers this day in humility and great thanksgiving for giving us new birth into a living hope through your resurrection. For the imperishable, undefiled and unfading inheritance for all kept for us in heaven, Lord, we praise you and give you thanks. As you guided Thomas's hands towards your own wounds, so guide the rulers of this community, nation, and the world to your heart, that they might touch and know you, and then make you known through their own actions that inspire justice and peace on the earth. Be present, we pray, to all who find themselves in their own locked rooms this day, the sick, the lonely, the fearful, the hungry, the forgotten, and those still unaware of their need for you in their lives. We give special thanks today for the earth and all of creation, for the continued work of this parish church in our community, for those who are staying home to protect others, and for those who are putting themselves at risk to serve us all and for the reminders every day of the Easter mystery wrapped up in your presence in this world and in our lives. We pray for all who have died this week and found their inheritance with you waiting for them, Lord. We weep as we sing out our alleluias. 
May they rejoice in the whole company of saints and those of us left missing them. Receive the breath of your peace until we too can share in your heavenly kingdom. Amen. We pray today, especially for the sick, for Timothy Holland, for Jessica, Michael, Susan, Kathy, and Paul. We pray for those who have died, especially for Jeffrey Pointer. All these people and all these things, Lord, and those left written on our hearts alone, we offer to you in the words your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you and those beloved to you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.